everyone. I'm Larissa Russell of Creative You, and I'm your host of the Creative Soul Healing Podcast. Here's where we talk about the connection between creativity and healing by interviewing amazing creatives, spectacular healers, and inspiring people who have used creativity in their healing. What does it mean to be creative? What is creativity? You don't have to write a best-selling book or paint a masterpiece or even play in a rock band. Creativity is in everything that we do, in the ways we think, in the way we run a business, in our everyday lives, we are creative all the time. Let's talk about how we are creative and how creativity helps us heal mentally, physically, and emotionally, right now on the Creative Soul Healing Podcast. Hi, everyone. I'm Larissa Russell from Creative You, and we are on the Creative Soul Healing Podcast. And today I have with me Donna Engstrom. Donna was one of our presenters for the Loving Healing Creating Summit that we ran February 2 through 14, 2020. And we absolutely, absolutely loved having her. Um, so you'll, you can still get access to the summit at www.creativeview.ca if you're interested. So today with Donna, uh, Donna firmly believes in the healing power of art. She's seen the effects up close and personal. Art is her passion. As a mixed media artist, Layering texture and color in an intuitive manner helps her weave a visual history. Her goal is to provide a mysterious and intriguing surface engaging you, the viewer. Donna finds words especially appealing, and much of her work is inspired by books and poetry. She encourages students to use color and shape to explore a subject while allowing them to personally connect with the artwork, inventing their own story. Donna often works in a, in a series and working on multiple pieces with an overarching theme allows her to explore and communicate her concept in many different ways. Having her students work in a series really allows them to dig deep and into the emotional well. Donna will be featured uh, or was featured in the January through March issue of House and Garden UK. Uh, that was this year, 2020, as well as she's doing a few other summits this year. So that's great. So welcome, Donna. Thank you. Happy to be here. Excellent. So Donna, can you share some of your story and the path you've taken to get here? Yes. When um, I'm a baby boomer, so when I grew up, uh, I went to a Catholic school and there was no time for art. You know, it was considered superfluous. So I, um, I had to find my own way with this. And what happened is, I, I ended up getting married, having four kids, and then I proceeded to do every crap known to womankind until uh, our 10th anniversary with my first husband. He bought me a wood rocking chair, and I wanted to paint flowers on the headdress. And I took a painting class, and that was it. I had found my passion. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's excellent. <laughs> So what would you say healing with creativity means to you? Well, first of all, I believe that um, everyone is creativity. It, I'm sorry, everyone is creative. And creativity, in, in no matter what form it takes, allows for honest self-expression. And in the visual arts, which is, is where I am, it allows you to interpret possible hurtful events from the past in a very safe and constructive way. So it, I think it really gives you the ability to deal with things that maybe you don't have words for. I know I have done that in my past. Created some pretty ugly, angry pieces that, you know, were good at the time, quite cathartic, but yeah. So yeah. I think art is really important in that respect. It lets you, I sort of, I liken it as to getting into a zone. Like, you know, when you read a good book, and you're like, all of a sudden, two hours go by, and, and you don't even know it. That's how art is, for me, at least. And it sort of gives you this space to deal with things and to calm your mind. Oh, that's excellent. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree with all of that. As someone who deals with healing uh, with creativity on a regular basis, that's my majority of my field. And so I... Yeah, I mean, when you're creating, it, you're allowed to like just let things go, right? So, exactly. Absolutely. And so, I'd like to share one little um, tidbit with you. Okay. Someone once said, I don't remember who, that every painting is a self-portrait, which I thought was very interesting. That working in a series like you mentioned that I do, it, it it's interesting to see the progression of what happens. 
Yes, absolutely. Yes, I love that. Every every piece of art that you do is a self reflection, self portrait. Right. Exactly. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, that that makes a lot of sense to me. It sits nicely in my heart. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> do you think there's a driving force that inspires you? Absolutely. Um, being a baby boomer, uh, you know, women have come so far since then. So celebrating the feminine and all her glorious aspects is definitely an underlying theme in all of my work. Mm -hmm. I especially like to honor older women because in our youth-based society, we tend to get overlooked. And I have done a whole series on um, called Crones, Crowns, and Crows. And a crone is um, a term taken from the Native Americans who but when a woman attains the age of 50, there's this big celebration. She's considered now a counselor to the younger women in the group. They seek her wisdom and such. And it's become a really derogatory term in our current um, conversations. You know, when somebody calls you an old crone, that's where crony comes from. Right. And it's actually a celebration of a woman who's reached the age of wisdom and maturity. So it's, that's definitely an underlying theme running through all of my work. Oh, I love that. As someone who has, you know, reached that age of 50 and beyond, <clears throat> I totally can appreciate that. Um, and, and sometimes feeling, I do feel like the wisdom part has come out. I feel more comfortable in my wisdom, but it is definitely a young person's world. I really see that my kids just thriving and growing and, and really accepted in everything that they do. And and so you have to find your place as a, as a crone. I'm going to take that title. Yes. <laughs> I love that. Yes. I have my own crown, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. But maybe that's what I need to do. I'll create a crown for myself. Yes. I love that. Um, so how has a past pain informed your life purpose? Or how do you specifically want to contribute to life? Like, I understand that. And I really took, took a look at that and how to answer mm -hmm. that question from my heart. And I have to say, definitely, it was my divorce. Mm -hmm. I finally found the strength to choose me and up becoming Mrs. Somebody. Right. And it was one of the most difficult decisions I've ever had to make. And art has helped me to regain my my confidence and my self-respect, my, my self-esteem, it has allowed me to mm -hmm. sit really comfortably in my power as an artist, which by the way, it took me a very long time to be able to call myself an artist. You know how that goes, you go through. Oh, yes. <laughs> but yeah, art should make you, art allows you to express things in a very safe and productive way. To get, you know, like Shrek says, better out than in. <laughs> just, so that's, that's basically where my driving force comes from. It's just realizing that I chose to develop myself mm -hmm. rather than becoming a, a clone of what someone else wanted me to be. Yeah. That makes yeah, no, that makes perfect sense to me. And I, I think that also <laughs> comes with that wisdom of age when you yeah. stop settling, right? And exactly. Yeah, and I, I find that a lot of work that I do are with women who are going through some transition later in life, whether it's divorce or the kids have left and they're now on their own, like, you know, uh, or a lot of women in their 50 plus are starting businesses, are starting to, you know, look for those things that bring joy to their life. So I just Isn't that totally wonderful? Understand. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that's, yeah, that's excellent. I love that. Um, so what is your favorite creative healing modality? What do you use for yourself? For myself, I love acrylic mixed media. I love to use collage. I love to use crayons, oil sticks. To me, it allows you to draw from other um, media, I guess, to enrich just an acrylic painting. Mm -hmm. I think it's... Um, it's, and it allows you to play. You know, as adults, we don't give ourselves much permission to play. 
So in every class I hold, I tell my students, consider this your written permission slip to play. It doesn't have to become anything. I just want you to enjoy the process. And actually, I had this sign up in my studio for a while when it says process, not product. Mm -hmm. When you start focusing on that end product, it starts to become precious in this driving force that somehow it needs to be sellable or displayable or whatever. As, and we don't allow us ourselves to just have that fun when we're playing around. Yes, absolutely. And I think play is such a missing aspect from our lives, right? So it's so yes. important to bring that back. Um, even children nowadays don't play like they used to. I totally agree. You know, they, yeah, they kind of say it. it they're, they're driven to be, you know, all these classes and the amount of video time and, and being on the computer and stuff like that. So yeah, like just absolutely playing. We do a lot of crafts here when the grandkids come. We do a lot of that so that. Yeah. yeah, get them. But yeah, for women who have, who have lost that, really important. I think anyone, anyone who's lost that, which is most yeah. everyone, right? There's only a few yes. of us creatives out there that try to bring everybody in with us. <laughs> right, exactly, yeah. exactly. So what would you say is your greatest, greatest accomplishment to date? And I put a lot of thought into this as well. I would have to say it's the fact that I have four grown kids who are amazing adults who have, each of them has strengths in their own way. And they, I have, I'm grateful for each and every one of them. Each and every one of them has taught me something. Mm -hmm. And I love the fact that it, they were wonderful when they were growing up, you know, kids are great, but it was, uh, I think part of me being repressed that I was so looking forward to them becoming adults where we could, they weren't dependent on me as much anymore. And we could actually, I could be a part of who they were. Right. Right. If that makes sense. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so if you could change one <laughs> aspect of our society through your work, what would it be? I think that it would be the focus on all the negativity that happens in the world. Our media is just, it's horrible. All we ever see are, are and hear about are bad things that are happening. And I think it would be wonderful if we would celebrate more of the good things that happen in the world. You know, that um, things you surround yourself start to become part of you. And if that negativity is part of your life, that's kind of where you end up going. So it's that would be the, the one thing that I would like to have changed is that our focus would shift from the negative to the more positive, wonderful, loving things that are happening in the world. Because you start to believe that everybody's bad. Mm -hmm. This is where the fear comes from. That's fear-based living. Yeah. And that's not something I choose to do. I'm an optimist, as my husband says. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I totally agree with that. I was actually just having that conversation last night about how we let... Um, fear overtake us and and how to get back to that and yeah no that I love that I, I have to say since I've become more enmeshed in my uh, like I've been teaching for off and on for 30 years but um, part-time right you just do it here and there mm -hmm. and and as I've made it my soul life then it's you know the amount of the people who come into your life and that sort of thing are completely different. And it's been really amazing to watch that transition. So I totally mm -hmm. understand that. And, you know, as we spread that love around, hopefully more and more people understand that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I read this wonderful book called conversations with God. Yes. And I, I, this, this page is like dog eared. It, like there's only two ways that, how people react. You either react out of fear or out of love. And we have a lot of fear-based crap going on. Yes, absolutely. No, that, that was a wonderful book. I read that years ago, but yes. Yeah. Uh, Neil, Neil Donald Walsh? Is that? Yes. Yeah. 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 And I can't tell you how many of those books that I bought and have given away. I think I've purchased it like five or six times. Yes. <laughs> needs it I give them my copy say here you really need to read this <laughs> <laughs> oh that's excellent maybe I need to read it again Just bring some of that back that's, you go back to it every now and then yeah no that's excellent 
And so what inspirational advice would you, would you give to someone who's struggling? I would say that it would be to seek help. Mm -hmm. No matter what it is that you think is, is so insurmountable, we make it so big in our heads that it becomes this heavy weight that you just can't even imagine any way out of it. And after my divorce, I did a lot of therapy and it really helped to be able to talk to someone else because they see it through new eyes. Mm -hmm. They give you insights that you didn't even see because you were so blocked into this little ball of crap. So I think that seeking help is probably, um, it allows you to see that the oncoming train or the light at the end of the tunnel is not an oncoming train, <laughs> you know? So that would be my advice is to seek help from whomever you think it would, would benefit you. Oh, I love that. I'm a huge proponent of therapy and I just even go and check in once in a while just because I'm like, am I on the right track? <laughs> yeah. Are things exactly. as good as you think they are? <laughs> yeah. Right. But it's I've definitely, definitely done a lot over the years. So yeah, I, so it, I think it also feeds into your self-confidence when you can go and talk to someone and they're like, yes, you're on the right path. You're doing so great. Yes. You know, it's, that's the most wonderful part. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I love that. So true. So you did mention the Neil Don Donald Walsh uh, book and the, and the quote that you, but do you have another inspirational quote that sums up your life journey? Oh, I do. And I have done many paintings based on this. It's a quote by George Eliot called, it's never too late to be what you might have been. I love that. It's such a thought provoking quote. Yeah. When you think about it, because as I said, I, I like to, a lot of my art is dealing with the older crone, the older woman. And like you said, so many more women now are branching out and becoming entrepreneurs and opening businesses and taking risks that they never would think of before. So to me, that fits perfectly. They're realizing that they, they can become whoever they might have been back then. So right. it's never too late to make a different choice, right? Yeah. No, I love that. I love that. So is there anything else that you'd like to add that we may not have discussed today? Um, I, I don't think so, other than I, I know that you mentioned that you were a coach, right? A life coach, is that right? A creativity coach, specifically, creativity. but yeah, it tends to be life. <laughs> uh, having a coach is like, it, gives, it holds you accountable. Mm -hmm. And it ties into that seeking help where you can get new eyes, you can talk things through and, and decide on what the best path is for you. So I, I think I'm just, it's a little plug for coaches, you know, okay. that if they really... They really do help. A lot of times people think it's like, yeah, but it, it really is helpful. Yeah, I totally, I mean, I have my own coach and it just brings so much focus, I find, right? And, and, the, and the women that I work with, because I typically work with women, um, it, that's what they find as well. And sometimes they're not even sure why they're there until we start to sort of delve into, you know, what it is, what changes they want to make. So... Yeah, I totally agree with that. So thank you for that plug. <laughs> oh, you're because you're doing great work. All your coaches out there. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being here. And to everyone who's been listening, that uh, we'll see you next week. And thank you for joining us. And in the meantime, I wish for you an amazingly creative day. Oh, thank Bye. you. <laughs>